So did Calvin get through all that after all? I mean, yeah, he played. He played baseball yesterday. Okay. But he's still. I'm calling him Chip. Chip. And he's. Why are you calling me Chip? Chip, mom. Chip. <laughs> yeah, he's got his <laughs> team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Four kids. All four of them. Oh, oh yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's fun memories. I had dry sockets on each side. Oh, oh, when yeah. a good listener, I'm like, God. I know. Yeah. Oh, it'll be okay if I sit a little yeah. too much. Yeah. I used a strong one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Good yeah, they tell you that for a reason. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can afford it. Hi, Kent. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I never did get one. Stand and talk like he needs to be on the road. Eleven. Eleven or so. Eleven. Kathy, eleven fifteen. So I have to complete the lunch with me. Wait, you're around ten. Okay. This morning. We'll just use our time efficiently. See what we can get done, and if we have more time, we'll just have to wait on that. Yes. All right, I do too. I'm going to call the meeting today to. Order. Um, we usually sit with Psych the Flight Salute to begin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mm -hmm. If you care to join me, I'll just. Uh, open myself with a uh, short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to lead and direct our school district in a path forward that's positive and the best path for students and parents and teachers and staff. And we just ask you to be with our in our meeting today and help us to make good decisions and have good conversations. All right. Talk. Uh, just a few things. I'd like to thank the board members for being here this morning. 
Um, I think it's really important for us at this time to, to reset and refocus uh, in, in moving forward. And so I, and I appreciate you making the time for that. I know it's not easy with your work schedules and everything else that you're doing. And so I really want to thank you and express my appreciation for that. Um, there is no AC in the room. Uh, this, this room and then uh, the rooms that are next to it are taken care of by one unit. Um, and it was not strategically planned to make you sweat this morning so that when you see what it's going to cost us Monday night, uh, that it will be easier to handle. But um, I'll share that with you Monday night. Um, I do want to share with everybody that um, usually when we, when we do a meeting, we will have been sending them out on YouTube. TextCaster website is down. I just checked it. You can't even get to the website, let alone try to log in. So I was not able to send out the meeting over TextCaster. Mrs. Gates used Swift K-12, uh, which communicates with our parents. But I know that does not get everybody who had signed up for TextCaster. And so um, I texted one person I know who uh, I know watches every meeting. And so hopefully we'll get the word out. And, and if they're not able to see this one, they will be able to watch it at a later time. Um, so, uh, I am planning on when we're finished with this part of the board meeting for executive session to stay in this room. And so we will not have action, any action items after executive session. I'm going to stop the YouTube at that time. Uh, and then we will go into executive session. And so, so you know, and so that our public knows, um, that, um, there will, no, there will not be any action. We need to use the technology that's in this room. And so we're going to stay. Okay. Any questions or comments for me? Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Okay. So we have an agenda item to accept resignation, Mrs. Gates. We want to thank you for your service, and we look forward to hearing about good things over there in Riverside as you take on a new role and position and and fulfill a goal of your that you've had, so I congratulate you. Congratulations. Yeah. We'll miss you Thank very you. much. Uh, we do need to accept that resignation. I make a motion <coughs> that we accept uh, the resignation of Assistant Superintendent Jennifer Gates, effective July 1st, 2023. I'll second that. Okay. Kathy made the motion, and Philip gave a second to accept Mrs. Gates' resignation. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, six zero. Next, we'll start our strategic plan discussion. And Dr. Hart is here uh, today with us today from Kansas Association of School Boards, and he is going to uh, facilitate our discussion. Hey, Jim. Good morning. Um, most of our schools are enjoying uh, at least the start of their summer break. And, uh, as, uh, as you guys know, board members uh, don't have a summer break. And so uh, I want to I echo what Todd said. Uh, thank you for coming in today. Um, <clears throat> we want this to be an interactive session. Really, this is just kind of a step one as, as uh, you guys are going, continuing your journey as a board. And so uh, typically, I don't, I don't print out my PowerPoint for you uh, because, you know, uh, we have good conversation and, and you guys grow from that. This topic's a little different today. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about change. And so... This to me is more of a opportunity for you to kind of have some good dialogue with your colleagues today. But uh, if you're like me as a crock pot, sometimes you're gonna need to go back and kind of process some of this information. And we're gonna cover a lot of things today. A couple outcomes I want you to think about as we get started is I, I frame these into questions instead of, of, of outcomes, maybe. So I like to put questions when, when we're thinking about this today. We may not touch all these at the depth of which the board would like to at this point, but this will kind of help guide our conversation. But really want to start with what does that vision look like uh, as a board? It's important for the board to be in unison in the, on that and have a clear understanding of if we're having that success, what would that success look like? The second is how do we lead change? Typically, uh, you know, I think we take for granted that change should just be something that we would automatically pick up and, and do. Um, how does that affect our stakeholders, uh, from students to staff to community to parents? And so have some kind of some time for reflection and opportunity to, to think about how to lead change. 
And then the actionable steps as we move forward, we'll start having some conversation about what are the next steps when we think about effective communication? What is the board's role in that? What's the superintendent, what's the district's role in that? Um, and how does that impact our culture moving forward? And so um, this is your agenda, this is your work session. And so if there's something you need more or less of, you just need to kind of give you that information. So real quickly, I want you to think about your district vision and it's on this next slide. But as you think about that, I'm gonna have you pair up in your, your shoulder partners here. What would success look like in relationship to your vision? And so if we were having success, whether it's tomorrow or three years from now, how would you define that success when you think about your mission statement? So preparing kids, shaping the future. I want each duo to come up with just a short little statement of what would success look like to you if we were achieving that? So give me just a moment to kind of process that with your, your shoulder point. <laughs> Nobody knows exactly how anything has sometimes changed that. But knowing you have options, you can have to About one more minute. One more minute. I'll have your report out here. Kind of a life skill. Yeah. Because I think that's something just like Dr. Barbie's saying. Sometimes kids are lacking in those things that's a little more automatic in the past. They are a little more. Come have you come back together here? So part of my role as facilitators is kind of keep us on track today because we could unpack one of these topics for quite a while, and so we'll try to keep us going. But uh, Madam President, let's start with you. Just a quick little overview of what does that success look like in the view of the mission? Well, I thought it was kind of neat. Kathy and I had we're really on the same train of thought. Probably all of us are, but preparing kids so that they have um, options for the future and the tools that are provided for them by our school district to get them to where they want to be later on. And that um, as they face that future, we also mentioned how we'd like to provide um, opportunities for them to be flexible and be able to cope with life, disappointments, struggles, hardships, um, that type of thing. Good, well said. What can, what can you guys add to that? Maybe things that were different. Um, just, if someone just, Pushing kids to do better. That's a, that's a pretty, pretty simple thing, but, but uh, I think it's important. Let's kind of eavesdrop a little bit about that word challenge. So if you think about the opportunities and the, the tools, how do you challenge kids just enough where they feel uncomfortable so that they can kind of get to that expectation that, that uh, is established? Okay. Last group, other things you would add? Well, one thing I see is 
develop a sense of responsibility so that whatever career path they want to go into, they have those basic sense of responsibility and whether they want to go work on the railroad or be a truck driver or a doctor. Because the real world is going to require yeah, those kind of things. And that gets into all sorts of areas. Long time to expectations to work in. You know? Yeah, thank you much. So I want you to think about that as our base today, our foundation. And so as we think about everything that we do, we're leading change. Also want to kind of connect it to these focus areas that you have as a district. The board spent time talking about the mission and vision, and then they're going to be measured through these four goal areas. And you guys, this is probably a review to you, I'm sure, but that student success. So many of you already mentioned things about opportunities, the world beyond the walls of, of your school district. Many of the jobs that your kids are going to fill have not been created yet. And so those things are going to be important as you as a board tackle. How do we support our staff? Uh, not just the support where they feel like this is the best place to teach, but also that they're growing, that we're challenging them as well to get to get better, and that we're providing necessary professional development. That social emotional well-being, that self-regulation that we hear. Uh, when times get tough, how do we respond to these things as, as human beings? And how do we respond to those as individuals? And then the last one is those clear expectations, that shared responsibility. And that fidelity and the board sets the tone you've probably heard this before but if the board sneezes the district catches a cold mm -hmm. and so it's important that you guys have such amount of um i don't want to say power in the sense of power but in the sense of responsibility and you know that as elected officials but that's what we're going to spend time talking about today so first thing i want you to unpack rope and it's going to be real fast in about 30 seconds how do you describe the art of art and science of leadership so Real quick with your shoulder partners, how do you describe the art and science of leadership? Um, allowing people to have enough opportunity to grow as a leader. So as you talk about teachers, you've got to put them in leadership positions. So they don't have the experience that you don't experience well means to be a leader or oh, you think you have to be a leader. So I think that's what I think. 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 You learn a lot of that, but I guess it's a good thing. It's a good thing to talk to you, which will be made with the football match. I guess it's a good thing. Okay, I'm going to pull you back here. So, and I want to put everybody on the spot because I know everybody's not comfortable with every topic we're going to talk about. So, but how would who would kick this off? What, what is how would you kind of describe that art and science of leadership? What does that mean to you? I, I think if you that there's book knowledge, yeah, you can read a, a book or a paragraph, but I think an important aspect is being in the shoes and um. Life is a field of competition, whether you're chess club, math club, band, music, football, tennis, what have you. Um, sometimes you're a leader, sometimes you're a follower. But experiencing that, I think, um, puts whatever book knowledge or book you've read, you, you see how it comes to life. Well, I think that leadership, I think that's the empowerment of those that are following it. You, you want those that are here at the school, you want to give them the freedom to explode, if you will, with their talents. Your job is to keep them within the, 
white lines, if you will. But leadership is the empowerment of the people uh, that are that are following you. Just say, go to work. I go into his bank, or it used to go into his bank. And uh, the people were so nice, and they just exuded. He didn't have to do anything. As a matter of fact, I hide from him. But, no, I mean, just sit the back. I'd hide from him. I mean, I'd go talk to the girls out front. They were nice. Much longer. So you've just described the balance of what the board and the district. So every person in this room, every person in your system has the capability of being a leader. And, and when and if they do that and how and what level at which they do that, it's important to have some of that science. It's important to have some of that experience, that art of how to do it. Uh, but most importantly, it's, it's important to have that common vision and understanding so people are willing to say, we're going to buy into that. We're going to adopt that. And that's going to marry really nicely with our change today because if if we have such a clear vision that nobody wants to follow, it may just be a clear vision to six of you. <laughs> and so um, yeah, that's, that's well said, Stan. So, Isn't that but, what our uh, representative government is? We have different levels and you have somebody in charge of Tens, hundreds, everybody underneath you is, they are supposed to be leaders of the ones that are underneath them. Um, yeah. And so you have the responsibility, in some sense, everybody, but essentially one person. Your main role is to adopt policy and hire superintendent. That's all. That's all our jobs. Yep. Yeah. But if without that clear vision, without that policy and allocation of resources and hiring the superintendent, all these things have a little more right. So, but yeah. And his job is to hire great principals, great super assistant soups, maybe a new assistant soup. <laughs> and then your principal's job is to hire great teachers. Principal's jobs then, or, or teachers possibly, hire great support staff, so on and so forth. So, yeah. To your point. So I want you just to shout out, this is called, if you will, just popcorn, so you don't have to wait to be called on. But when I put this word up here, what's the first thing that comes to mind? <coughs> show up on time. <laughs> so when you see day, show up on time, fair enough. Any other interpretation? Well, I thought of night, of course. Okay, all right, good. How about this one? <laughs> New? <laughs> Short, short. Okay. Thank you, Stan. Uh, you know, Stan and I are going to finish this meeting together right over here. So we have a good time. So, hey, the next slide, and I want everybody to, to give me a response on this, but what's the first word, first word that comes to their mind? I like it. I like it? <laughs> Mr. Evans knows. I'm bad. I do like change. Work. Work. It's hard work to change yeah. them, but yeah. frustration. Frustration. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I've raised homes in my life. It has changed. I do not re I am into pig rehab now. <laughs> you know it's funny because I, I work with a lot of a lot of farmers. And in many examples, a lot of our farmers will say, oh, that doesn't affect me. And, and you said it really nicely about everything changes. I had a farmer the other day about, why do we need to invest in technology? And I said, hey, what's the newest tractor you have? Oh, I just got me a brand new. Yeah. Brand new. I go, how much technology is in the tractor? Do you have, can you, can you just allow it to adjust for itself? And he was like, okay. You know, and so what's the first word that comes to your mind? Uh, unknown. Unknown, okay. Excitement. Yeah. Kathy, do you have a chance? Um, people often, uh, I, one word or oh, a phrase. Phrase, yeah, that's okay. okay. People often will not change despite the information in front of them. So we all know <clears throat> yep. that smoking is bad, and yep. we still see it. Yep. And, and the person who smokes knows it's bad. Especially if I come tell you, say, Kathy, you got to stop. What are yeah, you going to say? Right. You mentioned. So, um, 
people will not change even when it will what they're whatever it is they're doing is going to kill them yeah yeah and that's that's where some of the art comes some of the science that we're talking about and so this helps shape our conversation you can see with only seven of you around the board table here every one of you had a different perspective if we went out and we talked to your staff, we went out and talked to your, your community, every single person would have a different perspective. That's, that's why change is so difficult. What do you see here? Yeah. A beautiful woman. A beautiful woman, okay. What else do you see? Maybe one a little bit aged. Okay, thank you, Kim. So what is so interesting, it's just like the perspective you shared about the word change, is that we perceive stopping smoking through the perception and eyes of the beholder. And so you may convince me, you may tell me, you may browbeat me, but I still have that perception. And that's the hardest thing about leading people. And so we use quite a bit of research at, at uh, KSB, partly because we don't want to just use our own words. You know, that's great, but when we sit in front of the board, we want to give you some research that makes sense. And so as you think about when you are, the people that are expected to implement and the people that are impacted, that's what we're dealing with. And as a board, you have some responsibility in that. And as a superintendent, you have some responsibility in that. And that's what we want to kind of, kind of unpack a little bit. But the perception, you can't downplay. That is the most difficult part is how people perceive this. And everybody's going to perceive it different. Kathy, you said earlier, it's going to be perceived that I'm never, ever going to adopt what you're proposing. Just never. You know what? And that's part of it. But if we can get a majority of our people to adopt that, that initiative, that change, whatever will stick. And so we're going to kind of, kind of work through that today. So I want you to pick a change, not one that you're dealing with now, but one that's impacted you in your life. And I want you to think about these four phases that you went through, okay? I'm gonna use my parents as an example. My parents are in their upper 70s. And when they switch from the party line, the rotary phone, to the technology, now all the way to Facebook, that's frustrating for them, that's hard for them. Hard for them to keep up, if you can imagine. And so they went through all these pieces of the emotion that comes along with, and my dad was a smoker too, and, and all the emotion, to be honest, when his son showed up at the door and he had the patches. It was interesting because my dad's cheap. It's kind of ironic. He's cheap, but he was buying cigarettes, right? <laughs> and cigarettes are fairly pricey. But he was too cheap to stop smoking and to get a patch because the patch was a lot more money than the cigarette itself. So there was a lot of shock and denial when my oldest brother that stopped smoking, my dad was in the Korean War, but came and said, hey, I'm going to give this to you. Automatically, there was a little bit of, oh, my son spent that money that I was too cheap to buy. Now, what do you do as a dad? You're like, oh. And as soon as he left, I tell you what, there was a lot of anger. Like, I'm not doing this. I hate this. I don't know whose fault it was, but he went through that emotional roller coaster. And then over time, as you go that way, he started to figure out that hmm, we had three, he had three sons. I was the only non-smoker. The two boys quit, and he was the last one out of the bunch. And so at some point, he said, you know what? I'm going to have to kind of, I'm going to have to start accepting this, this reality for me. And so I want you to be thinking about an instance like that in your life. And I want you to think about these, these emotions and these phases, if you will, of, to be honest, loss on the left side all the way to something new on the right. And as, as he got to the right-hand side... He started to understand that, hey, this isn't so hard. It makes more sense to me. This is something, if you will, I can sustain and, and, and maybe kind of follow through with. And so take just a moment with your shoulder partner. I'm not going to make you report this out, but what was there a change in your life or maybe someone that is close to you that you saw this phases of emotion that went through as you think about the shock and awe of something new to the acceptance and the willingness to you know what, this isn't so bad. So take just a moment to kind of visit with your shoulder partner. Mm -hmm. 
something they'd be willing to share. And this is one of these things that when you when you go through a change like this and it's personal, that I, I don't ever make anybody just spit it out because it is personal. And so uh, don't tell my dad if you see him that I use him as my example. But Boy, we, we pick on our dad, so we, yeah. uh, when I saw that, that reminded me that my dad is the computer age came into work. And I experienced the anger and the blame and the, the I, I experienced that firsthand because I was the guy who was, what the hell are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> oh, you got to be there in the 80s when that happened. You took that, a front of that, I'm that, sure. That was, you're going from spiral notebooks to the way people did business, mom and pops anyway at the time, yeah. um, to finally we got to the acceptance, the understanding, and maybe even a little bit of the integrating that he left that up to other people. <laughs> While he understood it, boy, he was all smiles, man. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great. He's jumping up and down. But this works good. I just want a quick comment about dealing with employees sometimes, though. You have to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. and the feedback is anger. Mm -hmm. But you, if you know they can do this, but if they can't, they're never going to get over there. And that's when you have to make a hard decision. Yeah, you make you, this table start to kind of rise to the top as being pretty good participants. <laughs> I don't know if that's the no, I don't know if that's the norm or not, but I appreciate the feedback. But but let's go on this thread because th when we attach something to ourselves real life, it helps us understand what the people in our community deal with as well. And so what you two just described, I think, is spot on. At some point, we have to alter our behavior. Now that comes different for your dad as it did for mine. You can't go and physically make him do it. Uh, that will never work. He will never stop smoking if that happens. But we need to work with that person enough, like what Kent is alluding to, that we can give him the skills and the opportunity to see that this will work. Now, the challenging of their beliefs and behaviors, folks, that takes time. That takes communication. That takes a willingness for me to sit down and have a conversation. That's hard for a board to do, to be honest. Because when I leave the board table, I won't use Leslie in this case because she's the president, but Philip leaves and he's a board member. He's an individual patron. He cannot act as a board until he has a quorum. But you can act in unison if you have some clear ideals and consensus around what your message and what your, what your change is. But what happens is Jim goes out and goes, hey, I'm not part of that. I'm going this way. Phil's going that way. Now what happens? Now we have this discontent in the community 
And as soon as that happens, we know that the board doesn't have common vision anymore. And so now, now we're going to separate that. There's no way that I'm going to have to adopt anything because I know that I have people on my side. And that's going to be the toughest part for you folks. And you, I would imagine you're already experiencing that. And unfortunately, that's, that's going to be tough on you. And the most difficult thing, and I've heard you say it, just like my parents, the older I get, I catch myself, is the past has been fine. It's not broken. Working on the spiral notepad, we still made money. It still made sense. We were still on time. We still had a pretty good product, right? I heard that. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. How long did it take for him to see, though, that the new way was more efficient, maybe could make more money, maybe potentially would grow his business? Until he picked up a piece of paper with neatly typed and had all his fuel on it, he could see, he could see that it was going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's our job as leaders, whether it's board or district, to help those individuals and sometimes it's one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes it's groups of people, sometimes it's stakeholders, but it's our job to be able to do that. So let's use Kent and Stan's idea here as we talked about their example. And we're going to use the example that Stan gave about his dad, but we're also going to use the example Kent, Kent made about the employee that potentially maybe didn't have the skills or potentially didn't have the capacity or the desire to do so. So if you had to quickly tell me the difference between first and second order. Anybody volunteer to tell me what that, in your own words, what that means to you? Thank you, Eric. First order is something I can go ahead and do right now with the current skill set that I have. Um, Jim said earlier, um, done pigs and, and cows most of his life. If you added some other type of animal, you could probably adapt pretty quick to, to, to raise that animal. And to, is that fair to say? Probably could. Probably could, yeah. Now, if I was not a rancher and a farmer, and you plopped down one day, you, you brought three head of cattle over and said, hey, Brent, go take care of them. Whoa, I'm going to have to learn some new skills. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to call some people. I'm going to have to get maybe a different set of, um, you know, supplies, tools, professional learning. That's second order. So if it's something second order for you that is going to be out of your comfort zone, like Stan's dad, he's going to have to learn a whole new way of doing things. He has to put his big cheap tablet away and his pencil down, and he has to learn how to jump on a word processing system and an Excel document. Whoa, that's a second order change. But for somebody like me, if you tell me I'm going to switch from iPhone 13 to the iPhone whatever, I'm going to be like, hey, no problem. But for my parents, that second order change. Stop. I want to go back to the flip phone. I'll be honest, I'll go back to the party line. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. It was simple, easy. All I do is pick it up. So that's second order. This is where your perception about the change comes in. So Kent said earlier he had an employee, the perception that he or she had is as automatic with second order to that individual. Now, as people though, as bosses, as leaders, we got to figure out through that second order change, can that individual close that gap up to get to where Stan's dad was? And that is for you to figure out. So this logical step for me is that it is logical that I go from one new device to another, no problem. But if it's a second order, it feels so foreign to me that it's just illogical. I just can't fathom on doing it. And folks, you can't judge someone. If, if Todd doesn't want to be raised beef tomorrow, you can't judge that, hey, he's a bad person because he doesn't want to, just because Jim loves it. That's his perception. And so you're not going to change perceptions until you help people get to that point. I may automatically see the big picture, and I know that if I go to this computer system, it's going to make things a lot better. That's going to be first order. But Stan's dad said, hey, I don't see how this is going to be any better, son. I think you're just coming in here, young whippersnapper. You've not done it for 30 years like Dad has. You don't know what it takes to run a business. Okay? You were there. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's going to take time for Stan to sit down with his dad, coach him, provide him the resources, the professional development the time to be able to absorb and say, hey, this is going to be okay. 
if you can get to that person to say, hey, you know, it is going to be better if I stop smoking, they're going to be able to see that big picture. That is where the vision of your district comes in, where you got to be tight on. There's some things you can be loose on, but the vision and the success of kids, you can't. The group norms. So as a, an association or a, a school district, how we do things, how we develop change, how we roll out curriculum, whatever it might be, those things create some safety for people. They create a comfort level. They know when we come to school, they know when we leave. They know when we have professional development, they know when we don't. And so they know what kind of support they have from the superintendent. Every time the superintendent turns over, what do you think the staff does? Oh, we got to reestablish new norms. We have to figure out that person over again. And so that's what you're doing when you're doing a second order change. We're building new parameters, a way that we do business. The employee that Kent talked about that is unsure, maybe unwilling to adopt, we're developing new norms for our association. The banking world's probably been through a bunch of them. And you have to be, if you will, your culture is built on that. But if your culture is not built on that, we haven't changed for 30 years and it's not broken. The way we farm worked just fine when my parents did with the, the, the horse and the, and the plow. But those things over time, the people that gradually got away from the horse and the plow, they figured out that they were getting out farmed. And it was took so much longer and it was so much more difficult. And so it took them a while to start to develop those new norms. And the last piece that Kent hit on is how do we give the people the necessary tools to be able to do it? To be honest, my mom and dad are both very capable of being on Facebook and on the phone. But who sits down with them and walks them through the ease of doing that? If you ask my parents to put their uh, bank account number on the Microsoft or the Apple wallet, nope, no way in heck. Somebody's going to steal it, right? It's probably more secure here than somebody grabbing it out of your mailbox. Just give me your address, Ken. I'll find out what your social security number is. I'll know what your bank account is. It's going to take me a sec. I'll pick your mail up for a week for you. So, I mean, there's it's, a, it's just a mindset that, Unfortunately, the older we get, the more difficult it is, but it's not all about age. It's about how we perceive that change. So I'm going to, as we do this, this is a lot, this is a little bit more lecture today than typically we have a lot of interaction. I want to give you a lot of information to process. So then as a board, you can start to grapple with these things. There's four things that you can do as leaders, though, to help with this. So I don't care what the change is. And each one of you have identified one. There were four things that would help you adopt. Four things that would help Stan's dad adopt quicker. First off is the culture. So the culture, the willingness, and, and we use culture as a buzzword many times. And we also use it uh, sometimes the staff as a negative, like, well, it's poor culture, morale's bad. And it's easy to say that, right? But I know when you walk into a culture, and each, each one of you have done this, if you walk into a building, can you feel that? Good or bad, right? You walk into a bank. Well, we know Kim was in the back room not doing a whole lot, but thank goodness he had great people up front doing what? Greeting you, saying hello, being courteous. Hey, how can we help you? Great to see you, Jay Stan. You know, and you can go into the business next door. Can we help you? Yeah, what do you, what do you need? There, there's that feel automatically. That's what, as a board, you're in charge of the district feel. When that district feels not going good, unfortunately, we're going to we're going to the person that's in charge of helping make that happen. And he's helping not just lead the district, but also help leading the board into that culture. Second piece, communication. Just show of hands. Anybody ever been blamed for over communicating? <laughs> you have, Kathy. Seriously. I normally, normally don't give me a raised hands here, so make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> give me an example. Why, why would they blame you for over communicating? Uh, my kids tell me all the time, you already told me that, Mom. <laughs> but the trash is still full and it still hasn't gone out. Yeah, that, that doesn't happen much. But on the flip side, do they know your expectation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now it's up to them, right? But if you don't communicate, that is one of the areas of leadership that we struggle with. Third one is order. 
Now, I'm going to put Jennifer on the spot because she's leaving, okay? So it's okay that we, we, we put her on the spot. But typically, let's say in your tenure here, have we rolled out a new initiative in August? Just try not to, try yes. Try not to, but we do we sometimes. We probably have, but we try not to, but probably yes. And so we thought it was such a great idea over the summer. We Man, we spent all this time talking about it. And, you know, man, Mr. Evans is on board. He's excited about it. The board's gung-ho about it. We rolled out in August. And the staff does what? <laughs> Whoa, come on. There's some chaos there, right? My wife's an elementary teacher, and I can hear the first week of school, Brent, you won't believe the principal came, and she wants us to do this. And automatically, whoa, there's a, there's a feel of chaos. If you change the bus pickup order or the order of your... Pick up for your parents. What happens? Do you need phone calls at the board office? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my kid's going to recess and lunch at a different time. Boo! Right? That order feels off. That chaos. And the last piece, and these are all leadership responsibilities, is input. Now, we get confused on input because input doesn't mean that you two have the decision-making power, per se. It just means that you have the opportunity for input. And so you need to clarify that. When the board does a work session, and let's say they have a town hall, heaven forbid, and they invite people in, you have to frame that discussion. We're here to listen to you tonight. Unfortunately, as patrons, you don't have an opportunity to make a decision about That's our job as a board. But we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your opinion. But after we're done, we're going to have a different meeting. The board is going to make a decision. But... What you can say then is people had an opportunity to provide input. That is an example. Okay. But you need to frame those. So I call this CCOI, the short, quick acronym. So as a board moving forward and as a district moving forward, these are four quick, easy strategies to think about as we're transitioning and as we're doing new things, how are we developing that culture? And many times those cultures take place. If the building principals were here, they're responsible for a lot of that. The board is responsible to make sure that Todd's managing those principles, but typically the principals are in charge of each building culture. And so if there's a great building culture and there's one that's not, let's start to drill down. That's not the board's job to drill down. That'd be the, but your job is to say, hey, how's the culture overall? Is the communication at the high level? Any of you getting phone calls at home? Yeah. Now, will you get a phone call with some of the things you've gone through? Absolutely. You can't prevent it. But, but as you are doing these things, what can we do to be as proactive as possible? What can we do to have a unison message leaving, walking out this door, that all six of you have the same talking points, that all six of you have the same vision moving forward, so that I can't go to Leslie's house, hear one thing, and go to Stan's house, hear something totally different. When you walk out that door, and it's a, in this case, a 4-2 vote, and the first thing, no offense media, they'll go, Who's the no votes? <laughs> no, the board voted. The board voted to pass this this uh, this policy. It doesn't matter who voted no. It it matters that the board voted that we're going to do this. Now, over time, if Jim's the the dissenting vote every single time, at time Jim's going to go out there and go, hey, this board, I tell you what, they just don't know what they're doing, right? That's where the culture of the board comes in, and so these are very applicable to you as well. This order, we got, we can't underestimate the order. The young lady or the young person you were referencing, her job felt chaotic for a while. Now, over time, you may find out that she just doesn't, she's not a good fit anymore. But it's your job as the leader to say, you know, let me give you the tools and the professional development to get you up to there. But after that happens, you may find out that Stan's dad is just not equipped to do it this way. It's just possible. And then the last piece we talked about, don't undervalue the, the amount of input, but be clear on what the purpose of that input is and how you're going to use it. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple strategies here to think about. And I want you to think about these questions because this will paint this last hour of our conversation. So as we think about this, I'm going to put these in four categories, but I'm going to use CCOI to help frame them. I'm going to have the board come up with some strategies, some actions, some talking points, you will, and then Todd and I will kind of put those into some buckets for you. So you're not leaving here necessarily with a bunch of homework, because I know you, you all have full-time jobs, things to do. 
need to be making some wagyu meat. But Tom and I'll get together and just put those in some manageable chunks for you. So as a board, you can kind of process that. But really, as we think about this change, we're going to talk about these four P's as we end today. But you as a district, no matter what role you play, you want to have a clear purpose. That clear purpose is the why. I want to know why this is important. And to be honest, um, you know, my wife and I talk about this. When it affects your kids, oh man, the hair on my neck goes up, right? Where it affects your kids, I mean, it's important, right? But not quite as much. And so that has to be crystal clear for your parents. It has to be crystal clear for your staff. We want to paint this picture. How and what, what, what is it going to look like? I want to see for myself how this is going to impact me. So if we're going to change the pickup schedule, and we're going to go from the back of the building to the front of the building, I, as a parent, want to feel comfortable. And you have some parents that, guess what? I want to know before school starts. Don't be telling me when school starts. I want to know in advance. And so we're going to think through that and talk about that. That plan is how. How are we going to do it? So we know what we want to do. Now we've got to figure out how we want to. And the last piece in the part is who is going to be responsible. Board has some role, but in a lot of cases, they're delegating a lot of those roles. They're developing policy. They're making motions. They're putting budgets and lines in places where you want to spend those money that reflects on your goals. But I like these questions up here that I feel like help really articulate, as we talked about, and I appreciate Stan using his example today with his dad. But if you think about, we don't know what we don't know. So what suffers? When I don't know that, the order suffers. And so as leaders, we must clarify routines and our roles. And so as a board, we need to be clear with our superintendent, our leaders to say, hey, this feels like our people aren't clear enough. They don't quite see the big picture. They need a little bit more structure. Now, that doesn't mean the board's figuring out how to do it. That means that we're having enough conversation that we know um, how to create that. When we think about the input, we feel excluded. Now that's little double-edged sword, right? Everybody wants input on everything uh, until they got to make the decision, right? And so there's a balance there. And so town halls, is that an option? Yeah, I think small groups, I think small groups that are regulated and manageable are most beneficial. I want to be able to sit across the table from Kathy, have a cup of coffee, Phil shows up, Jim shows up, and have a really positive conversation. But if you get 40 people in a room, more than likely Stan and Ken are going to do all the talking. Because they're the ones that we we talked to church on Sunday and we said, hey, you be a spokesman, you be the loud ones, you get on them, right? So you want to be some, you want to provide some structure there. And you want to invite particular people, potentially. You can identify particular stakeholders that you want to identify. There's nothing wrong with that. Those are called influential and opinion leaders. So as we think about that, help them decide where do they have an opportunity to be part of the decision. And when is the decision going to be left up to the superintendent of the board? Help them understand that. I know it seems kind of silly, but help them understand, just like my kids, hey, I'm going to let you make this decision, or no, this is mom and dad's decision. And so let them know just like adults. As we think about, as we challenge our beliefs, it can be as simple as my parents changing their cell phone, we must have some dialogue so they see how this is going to help them. It was really quick to convince my mom, not my dad, but my mom, when I sent pictures of my daughters that were dancing, they were playing basketball. Oh my gosh. I mean, th that started to be real for them. My dad's still like, man, I'll just look on my wife's phone. <laughs> you know, so he, he, he enabled himself to say, I don't have to do that. But it's important that they see this big picture. And this last piece that I think helps frame this is that this is all about kids, folks. That's why I started with the vision. And again, people will use this input and culture against you because they're buzzwords. Oh, we want more transparency from the board. You've never heard that, I'm sure, right? <laughs> but really, what do they want? Really, they want some more input, and potentially they don't feel safe within the culture they have established. And so they use something against you in a negative way to say, well, if I intimidate Leslie at home, I'm going to get what I want. Well, I hate to say it, nine times out of ten, that doesn't work. I'm going to dig my heels in because you know what? We're doing what's right. You just don't want to listen to what we're doing. And so there's what that balance that we're talking about. So let's have a little bit of reflection here. Again, I want you to go back to this change, and I want you to reflect on why it was successful or why it wasn't. So if you pick one that was highly successful, great. 
I want you to think about one maybe that wasn't so successful. Why was it not successful? And then I want you to think about how did you respond to each one of those? So how did you respond to the one that was successful? So Stan's dad, really, he found out that this really worked. I'll guarantee each one of you have been through a change that wasn't successful. How did you respond? And as a board, we're going to have to start to figure out what that looks like. And so I'll give you a moment to kind of wrap this up. So one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to do with my school and 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 my school and
all I hear there is calculated in time. Mm -hmm. you know, know your know where you're going, small chunks to get there, and you don't have to do it alone. That's the hardest thing about this is that many times we make an we make an action, we make a policy, and at times we don't revisit that. And so this is important work right here that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's hard to come back to it. We kind of think, hey, it's taken care of, right? Even if we just talk talk about it again, it's just flushing it out, mm -hmm. thinking about, hey, how are we doing? Do we need a little more improvement? Or hey, we, we just missed the mark. So as a but, teacher, once when you're I was, I think you were the principal then, and I, I wanted so bad to implement a new program in my American government called a We the People program. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I dove into it, and I got scared, and the kids were like, I'm not doing this. This is like intimidating. This is like too much work. And I quit. And so I spent the whole, you know, maybe I dove in too fast. I don't know, but I spent the whole next year really, you know, analyzing why am I doing it and what good's going to come out of it. And then I went to the people that had done it. And like you said, had those people kind of back up what I did and it became a very successful, fun activity for my kids. Other thoughts, gentlemen? <clears throat> Sometimes you're forced to realize that that change isn't working. Or the lack thereof, I think I heard you say earlier, right? Yeah, the inability to change. Yeah. I Over time, I think I heard Jim say that the inability to change cost me my business or cost me my pride or cost me my, my output. And it wasn't until then that it hit me that, hey, this, this is even... Yeah. So this last section here, I'm, we're going to just paint. There's four phases of change. I want to give you some strategies. And I want you to think about because what I hate when I go to a professional development thing is you leave there with what exactly can we take away, right? You got to have some things that you can use. And so um, one thing that we're going to be changing is we need to change some of those animations. So I don't like all of those big. What we need to think about, folks, and, and I don't want to paint a dreary picture, but I want you to think about we're right here right now. That's not necessarily a negative thing, because I want you to think about this is where we want to go. And so the importance of the conversations that we've had is that how do we get there? And so it's not going to take just this one time. It's not going to just take Todd behind the scenes. It's going to take this is going to be a long process and it's going to take some time to heal. It's going to take some time to help people kind of adopt. It's going to have to going to have to revisit this mission and vision and it needs to happen all the time you know and so unfortunately that's why change doesn't necessarily always um, stick is because we roll it out and then we then we roll back from it and we don't really touch it again and so I'm going to give you some concrete things to think about so if you'll stand up here real quick everybody just stand up I just want you to cross your arms like the person is in the picture. Okay, just whatever comfortable. So if you're just sitting talking and how do you cross your arms, all right? Now I want you to look about, when you do that, I want you to look at what arm's over the top. So my left arm is over the top, okay? Now I want you to switch it the other way. <laughs> how, does that, how does that feel? Right. It feels stupid. <laughs> it feels uncomfortable, right? Now, when I sit down in the chair, I'll be honest, I cross my leg because it feels comfortable. See, some people do this. Same way with the arm. Why is that so doggone tough? <laughs> Over something simple. <laughs> but I've been married to a teacher for 25 years. We have a few teachers in here. I feel like I know how to be a teacher. I, I feel like I know how to engage people. I feel like I know how to set up an environment of a classroom where people feel safe. But then, then my principal or my superintendent comes in and says, hey, you do something more really different. It feels like that. And automatically, I'm like this, right? I'm, I'm just, so why is this simple thing? That's why we can't underestimate this perception. And so I love this. And I, and I would encourage you that whether it's principals or whatever, we need to help our staff walk through some of these things too. They need to start visualizing what the board's visualizing. 
you know, it's not just the board do the training and do the work. It, it's our staff is going to have to kind of go back to that ground zero to say, what is student success for me? What does success look like in my building? So, hey, thank you. So we're going to unpack these, and we're really going to, again, this is our premise, to change this perception. And I want to give you a little bit of research to kind of set the stage. So this magnitude of change is all dependent on the implication for the stakeholders. And folks, you guys have a huge amount of stakeholders to take care of. Man, you just can't shake that responsibility. There's a bunch there. From kids to staff to yourself as a board to your community members to patrons. We got some, we got some older patrons in the district that don't have kids here anymore. But guess what? They vote and they care about what is happening. Well, you got to care about them too. And so the, the impact and the implication is, is tough. And it's a great responsibility that you hold. Um, the miscalculation of change is hard. It really is. It's just tough. It, it is this opportunity, and I, I'll have to admit, in my 25 years, I've been on both sides of those things. Where I thought it was a great idea, I used Jennifer as my scapegoat earlier, and I rolled this thing out. We spent all summer researching it. We thought it was a great idea. And doggone, we went to a special conference, Leslie and I. We loved it. We came back, we're fired up, right? And we come into the building, and it was like, boom. I mean, it was an automatic stop. Oh, my favorite is, is that we went, we loved it so much, our principals couldn't go. And we come back to the building and our principal's like, what? you guys can do that in your room, but I'm not going to ask Kathy to do that, right? And so that's that miscalculation we're talking about. And it happens to all of us, whether we're on a farm or in a bank or whatever business we run, we've all been in those situations. Unfortunately, the situation you're in, it impacts kids. And so that's the importance of this culture that CCOI that I talked about. It can be complex. It's an ongoing thing. I told Leslie that, man, I would love to, it doesn't have to be me, but three months from now, let's do a little dipstick. Let's pull out the dipstick of your pickup, your car, let's check the oil, see how we're doing. Todd said it earlier, it's hard to say, you know what, I, it's hard for him to be, let's say, in charge of all that without sometimes having some opportunity for some facilitation or some an outside voice. Hey, have you thought about this? How does that work? Because when you're on the inside, it's tough to kind of back up, right? I heard a doctor the other day when uh, we took my daughter to an appointment. He doesn't doctor his own kids. And I'm like, why do you say that? Well, because it's hard to be objective. So you need to be able to step back and see it. And that's why this, this is why this is hard. Leadership, we talked about this. I'm not going to bore you with all the leadership functions. But the CCOI are the pieces that I would hang my hat on as a board. Those are the things that make or break a change. The other pieces will accelerate it. Those four will, will draw it back and, and really pull it to a halt. And the last piece, what is this balance? Because you can only go so fast as the people that are involved. If I'm trying to ram down, ram, ram down Dan's dad's throat that we're going to do this in a month, he may need a six-month process. It's going to fail, folks. Just going to fail. So what are those calculated steps to get to where the two pass? How do we get there? And calculate those things out in small, manageable bites. I'll, I'll ask the two uh, guys over here. Have you ever had any luck eating an elephant in one bite? <laughs> no. How do you do it? One bite at a time? Yeah. yeah. And so that's no difference than this magnitude of change for people. Now, at some point... Kathy's not going to adopt, and we're going to talk about Kathy. If Kathy doesn't adopt, guess what? She's not going to be on the bus anymore. And that's not a negative thing, but over time, we're going to do it calculated. We're going to get a majority of our staff or our community on board. And at some point, Kathy's going to decide whether she wants to be part of that anymore. That's up to her. I like can't use the example of the employee. At some point, if this is, if this is something we're going to do and people have embraced it, at some point, we've got to get the right people on the bus. So here are the four strategies I'm going to have you have you kind of use and think about. And again, part of the reason I brought this packet for you so you can kind of jot some things down. And so first part of this phase, we're going to talk about creating vanity. Now you may, as a board and a community, and I'm not patronizing you, you may think you've already done this, okay? But I probably would imagine that there's some, there's some work that you could do to go back and kind of paint this picture. And so I want you to think about these ideas as we talk, as we go. So it's like making this case. If I wanted to lose weight, Okay, it's really up to me. I hate weight. I love barbecue. I love eating. I just love those. 
I went from being in a building eating popcorn and hot dogs to now going through town to stop by your local restaurant that doesn't have a brand name. I'm gonna stop by there. Oh, wait, man, they have a special day chicken fried steak. Ooh. Well, over time, you know how what that does to my waistline. But we have to make that case at demand. So it wasn't until my mom saw that she could see beautiful pictures of her granddaughter that she thought, you know, this demands for me. My dad didn't think about not smoking until his son spent the money for him. But for that, no way, I'm not doing that. You guys don't understand. Don't understand why I'm doing it. And that's all around your vision. And so the relative advantage, if you don't hear anything else out of this first phase, it's this relative advantage. It's this relative advantage that what I'm doing now, if I adopt this, it will be better. It will help me treat kids differently. It will get better success. It will give us more money to do more things. It will provide more opportunities, whatever the case might be, folks. But you need, as a board, to be fairly crystal clear on the reason and the purpose of that demand. So I want you to think about real quick what you've currently done that you think of that really has created this demand. Is there a relative advantage to your change? Okay, and I want you to talk about that in small group here. So is there something that you feel like for the change that you're unpacking right now? What is that demand? And do people understand what that why is? Okay, so I'll give you a, give you a little bit to talk that out. <laughs> You guys okay with that question? Trying to figure out what, I mean, I mean, are you asking what the demand is? Yeah, the board doesn't know what the demand of the change is. It's going to be really hard for you to figure it out. So, As far as just the I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say it's probably a little better. You know, I know. I think we're just a lot of the same way. You know, we're talking about the board of supervisors and yeah, but all of a sudden, it was even Smoke and fire, and I love this change. Yeah. 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 
Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm personally affected, guess what? I don't like that. I, I don't buy that. And, and I can appreciate that. I really can. But the relative advantages of board moving forward is that your job, I think, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is that you're committed to the success of the district moving forward and all the kids that are here. And that's your mission and your, and your, your focus. And so how do you paint this relative advantage so that people can at least understand the purpose? And that's something you as a board are going to have to continue to revise and continue to talk about. Because really, in some essence, all six of you should have something that's similar to that in not necessarily verbatim, but so that you have some level of consensus as you go out in the community and you are confronted, Kathy, and you say, you know, it is. It's about the we're trying to be thoughtful. And unfortunately, we're the body that has to make hard decisions to say, hey, how and what will we look like three to five years from now? We want to still be able to provide the opportunities, the experiences that we, at the level of we as a board think so. And so those things are important. It can be rather difficult as a board um, putting that forward when some of the narrative coming from outside is being twisted to a point where um, some of the staff think that we're going to have a windfall. Yep. Yep. And it's how do you go about countering that without attacking a person or just flat out saying that's a lie? So Jim brings up the point of where really our end outcome is going to be. And Todd and I have talked about this several times. It, it is difficult to put your put yourself out there when you know that <clears throat> no matter what you say, somebody's going to be harsh on you, right? I mean, and our board has lived through that, not just in this case, but through COVID too. And so we're going to talk about how do we share our story, not in response to someone else's. Because I'm not going to respond to someone because you said, hey, you know, Britt doesn't look very good in a suit today. I'm going to say, you know what, I wear a suit every day because it makes me feel good. I'm not going to combat or confront you, but I'm going to tell our stories in district. And sometimes I'm, we're clear about that, right? Is that fair? Man, how many times do you need to have your hand knocked off before you say, you know what, I don't want to get knocked off anymore. And so, but at this point, I think, Jim, to your point, is that we're going to have to, as a board, and as a district, not come back or confront, but tell our story. What is going on in our district that's important to us? And that's tough. And that's where this relative advantage, I think, for you is so important that the board is crystal clear on what and why we're doing this. And if it's hard, if this is a conversation that's really hard, uh, we just need to have it a little bit more often, a little bit more frequent, so it's not so difficult. Because you want to feel equipped when you go out there to say just what we just talked about. This is for the longevity of our district, the success of each and every student. Well, you don't believe that. I didn't say that. I'm saying this is what, as a board, that we feel. But we're not going to get into the back and forth because, unfortunately, you just never win that. And so that's what will be our outcomes as we leave here. What can the board do? What can the district do? And it's not going to be easy, folks, because you guys live here, you've grown up here, and to be honest, some people, you're probably going to lose some friends over these changes. Um, Board members experience that all across Kansas that they get on, their buddy comes and says, Hey, we've been we've been friends for a long time, Stan. Yeah, we have. And we're going to continue to be buddies if you can handle that I'm sitting in this chair. Um, and so, and if that person doesn't like it, you know, there's there's some alternatives for that person to do. I mean, these seats come open every two years. <laughs> and so if it's that easy, sit in the chair. And I'm not trying to dramatize that, but essentially I'll encourage Leslie to bring this relative advantage back. If you could have a common direction of where we're headed, where kind of like we articulated, so important for each one of you to say similar things so you feel comfortable. You don't have to give an answer. Many times you need to give a response, but you don't need to answer the question or you don't need to justify your decision. This is what we've done. This is where we're headed. And we're not comparing apples to apples. We're saying this is what the board's doing. And so telling our story is going to be critical in that. So phase two is about this implementation. 
And this is this is where you get into the second order and first order. To be honest, folks, you're going to have a lot of people, and you're probably not hearing from them, but you got a lot of people that are, this is first order change. It's okay for me. Makes sense. I understand why the board did it. They're not calling you, picking up the phone, and say, hey, Stan, you're board member of the month. No, they're leaving those things out. That's that's our typical environment that we live in. Nobody's saying how good a job you do until they don't like what you're doing. And so <clears throat> most of this implementation is through the second order. And so as you think about this, we talked about this earlier, is we're always going to have people in each one of these categories, as Rogers talked about, is the adopter curve. And you could use any of the examples you use today. My dad smokes, cell phone, uh, the adoption of a new financial thing. You can put that anywhere you want. And I'll paint this really quick. So you'll have people in your district for different change. They're always going to be the first person to jump on. Am I right? Are there people that are calling you and say, great idea. I want to lead that. I want to help with that. As soon as they see that possibly that will work, you'll have some early adopters. Yep. Let's say I'm sure back in the classroom days, as soon as they saw you doing something and it worked, they go, oh, I'm doing that too. I'm jumping on board, right? But at the beginning, they're like, eh, might be a good idea, but I'm a little leery. That's where that test drive opportunity comes in. Unfortunately, in some of these situations, folks, we don't have opportunity to, to slow play it. As soon as you get a majority of these people here, <clears throat> that's going to take some time, but as soon as you get those people over here, that, that change will stick. Once that change sticks, gets over the chasm, if you will, then you're going to have to start to really work with individual people. The board is going to have a role in this. There's going to be some influential people in this community that Kent has a relationship with that he's going to have to be responsible to do that. It just is. I'll guarantee you, Kent, you've been a long time banker, I take it. You have some deep root. Jack of all experience. Master of none. Yeah. Um, yeah, you and I are brothers then. So you have some relationships, I'll guarantee you, that are deeply rooted with individuals. And at some point, they will see that some of them, that this is what's best. And so, Leslie, you have them, Kathy, you have them, et cetera. And so, but I want you to think about the stakeholders in your community right now or individuals in your community right now. And I'm going to ask you kind of where some of those people would fall. Okay. Do we have a good cross section of our stakeholders right in here? Do we have a lot of them here just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen? Waiting for a new school year, waiting to hear some communication. Do we have a lot on this backside that are like, nope, this is a terrible idea and it's going to crash and burn. Okay. So I want you to be thinking about those stakeholder groups. Nobody knows them as well as you do. And so these influential and opinion leaders, this is where this leverage of this information comes in. How are you? This is where this is going to be important. So the people in your community, I can go to a community when I'm hiring a superintendent and I automatically know the person sitting in the room that the people in that room most respect. It's not hard. They, they do this. They, I ask a question, I go, Kent, why don't you answer that for, uh, for us, would you? Okay. And then automatically I know that people have respect for that individual. So he fits in one of these categories. And when I know he fits in one of these categories, we as people, when we think about this change, we have to leverage that. Now, I'll be honest, I'm good with people, but it can be kind of tough if I'm walking into somebody's office and I know it's a little contentious. I'm like, hey, Mr. Evans, can we have a conversation? Yeah, sure. How you been? How's your family? Blah, blah, blah. I saw your church on Sunday. Oh, then you unpack all that stuff. Now let's get to it, right? That can be hard, but that's going to be the role that is going to be necessary here to ensure this level of success that we're talking about. And the challenge that you're dealing with now they're not going to go away without us embracing and leaning into some of these folks. Now, why is it important when I go to the football coach and I'll say, hey, Stan, the football coach, I need you to get on board with this new instructional initiative. Why do you think that's important for me to do as a building leader? <clears throat> I'm going to stereotype it because... Buy in. Buy in. And why did I go to the football coach? <laughs> yeah. They're influential. Influential, thank you. <laughs> and and just for the record, they may be an awesome teacher, but many times it's regardless whether they're an awesome teacher or not, but they have power. And they have power because how many of our community members go to the football game on Friday night? They're successful. 
And guess what? Jim pulls up his truck. He parks, sits in the back of his pickup. He watches the game. He doesn't have kids in the building anymore. But guess what? He comes to every game. Don't mess with my football field. Why are you talking about putting in turf? It's crowned right now. Grass don't mess with it. I'm going to be upset, right? That's what we're talking about. And as a board member, that's where you come in to really start to paint that picture for those people to help. They may not be in the building. They may not have kids. But those people, unfortunately, folks run this, run this community. And it may be you, but those people run this community. You know, Todd, did you grow up here? No. And everybody knows it, okay? <laughs> you could live here 25 years, and then go still go, nah, you're not from here. I got a board member at Santa Fe Trail, bless her heart. She's been in her district 30 years. And she married somebody, graduated from there, but man, you didn't grow up here. Oh, come on, folks. <laughs> Leslie's one of those, Kathy. Yeah. Now, Leslie married a local person. Yeah. So she's, yep. So oh, you're a transplant. Yeah. 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 And so this is why this is so important. So I want you to take a moment here, and I want you to think about the stakeholder groups that are in your district. And, and, and at this point, if you have individuals that you wish, so if you have individuals that you want to put in this category, great. If you have some stakeholders, we're not going to share this out. But with your table group, let's start talking about, do we have our parents here or our parents over here? Do we have communities here or over here? And folks, to be honest, and again, I don't, I'm not in your district. I'll never be here. I'm from the outside looking in. You cannot discredit any one group. Um, you may think, hey, I'm tired of messing with those people. I'm tired of talking to that person. But where they fall on that continuum. So have a short conversation. Again, we will not report that group or those individuals. <laughs> Yeah. I 
that's that's a perfect I I think that would shift right yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Probably more people on board later. Yeah. Rolling Because otherwise it's easy to show up. Yeah, that's not the way it should be. Let's come back together, folks. So, as we finish up today, I want you to think about how we tackle different stakeholder groups, different individuals. Um, I was talking with Ken and Stan, and it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of this conversation that you as a board will continue to have, is that whose role is it, how do we want to do it, and how do we make sure that we have a consistent message around that. And so I don't want any of the board members to feel like they're obligated to have, you know, small group discussions on their own uh, without feeling comfortable to do that. Or having those discussions with stakeholders that possibly should be taking place in a building or in a district or whatever. And so the board will have to flush that out a little bit. And I hope, hope this last conversation that if we don't fully get to it, I think, Leslie, this will be kind of potentially, you know, when you guys meet again, let some of this marinate a little bit and then put some of those actions in. Be honest, there's some of you that are crock pots are like, I'm not quite ready to just frame all those things perfectly out where maybe I'm a microwave and it's a little easier for me potentially. And so I want you to think about what are these stakeholder groups. And again, I can't value enough. Don't discredit just because somebody's a laggard. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're a poor person or or an adversary. It just means that in this case, in this change, they're a late adopter for whatever reason. And so we have to be thoughtful about how do we sit down with that influential or opinion leader for that group of people to help them process through this. And that's the art of, unfortunately, the art of change, which is, ugh. We were talking about only if I could own my own business and I only had one employee and it was myself, you know? And I always say, wouldn't it be great to be the principal of an orphanage? Because I would never have to answer any parents. That's not real world, right? And so that is the complexity of this part. And I heard Todd's group say, you know, a lot of times we do this work, but we have this tough conversation, we flush out a lot of these things out, and then I, I put those notes and those things in my notebook, and I go, you know what? Kind of, man, that's kind of done for a second. And so this is going to be ongoing. That's the hard part about this work. So let's think about this third step. This is management transition, and this is where the second order, the people that are on the backside of that adopter curve live. I used a little bit different picture here. Folks, this is real. This is real. This They feel like I've lost something. There's some type of ending for me. And just like my parents with their cell phone or their, you know, giving their bank account away, there is some significant loss that we have to validate. And that's tough. To be honest, I don't want to validate anymore. We've been validating it, let's say, in my mind long enough, right? Um, Parents, it's time to jump on board and, and let's get moving here. But it takes everybody a little bit longer. This is the place right here 
where you want to be listening, you want to be getting input, you want to be using the CCOI, those structures that we that we talked about earlier. Are we communicating effectively? If Jim doesn't know anything about it, is it Jim's fault? Yeah, we put it on the website, Jim. Why don't you, don't you figure that out how to get on Google, okay? No, it is my opportunity as the leader to make sure that Jim has that information. Um, how do I give him the skills necessary to be able to do those things? With teachers potentially that are, that are transferring over, and we need to be reaching out to those folks, even in small, safe groups, maybe, I mean, it sounds weird, sign them a mentor coming into a new building. You know nothing about this new building you're coming in? You know, you have Stan there to help you out. Stan's been in our building for 20 years. He knows everything about it. The principal can help facilitate that through the superintendent plans. And so same way with parents, same way with students, same way with whoever. Uh, help, this should be the time where you put all your resources, the strategies, the opportunities. Leslie, let me hear what your thoughts are. You know, I want to, I want to, I, I know you're upset about this. Tell me more about that. Seek to understand instead of being, seek to, under, to be understood. That's hard. Listen, you don't have to give a response, Jim, every time somebody asks you a question. They just want you to, they want to be heard. And that's, ugh, that's hard. I want to fix it, right? I'm a dad, three girls, I want to fix it. I don't want to just perseverate about the feelings. No, nope, I want to fix this and move on. But that's not what people need. So I've been married for 25 years. And some days I don't do a good job of it, all right? And then as we continue to transition here, now we start to get some of that level of... Um, Comfort, confidence, I can do this, this is going to be okay, I can see the end vision, it is going to be better. That's going to take some time. And again, it's going to take a lot of hard sweat equity to get to that point, and that's where being calculated of who does what in small chunks will serve you well. And so as we think about this, the purpose is a why. Uh, it, I tell you what, sometimes I take it for granted, but I'm like, this is the best idea ever. Hey, go on. What is the whole understanding? Let's get jump on board. But it's that understanding of true purpose. And folks, you may not get everybody. I look up on that wall. You're not going to get every single person, but you're going to get a lion's share. But it's going to take time so they understand truly what the purpose is behind them. If you will, we got to paint the picture. How is this going to look different than what we've been doing before? You know, we talk about sustainability. We talk about the vibrance of the district five years from now. That's what you got to be paying. What's it going to look like? That's why we started today about, hey, what does success look like? Well, if we're going to have all these great opportunities, we're going to have opportunities, tools that they walk away with, that's the picture you're painting for them, but they got to be able to see it. How does that impact my kid? How does that impact me as a community member? They need to be able to see it through their lens. Maybe I don't have kids in the district. How does that affect me? You know, is my tax is going to go down. Or are they going to go up? What are you going to use my money for? Those are all things that you need to be thinking about, and how do we share those with our patrons? What does this plan look like? For example, this, is, this would be like the blueprints, if you will, if we had an architect in here today. These would be the blueprints of what this is going to look like week one, month one, year one. They need to feel that order. They need to know there's some input along the way. All these things, as you can tell, all these strategies start to kind of mesh together to help people change and adopt. And the last piece here is, what is my part in this? What is my job? What am I going to be asked to do? Um, I'll use the clerk, for example. Todd comes in tomorrow and says, hey, we're going to adopt a new, uh, new finance program. Keep track of the budget. <laughs> Whoa! She has beautiful hair, by the way, but tomorrow it's going to be more gray. Guaranteed. Am I right? Can we be a little stressful? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, you know, it affects everybody different. So I want to know... And this is the hard part about leadership, is you cannot underestimate the perception of the individual. And so what is my part? How's Kathy going to be affected? How's Philip going to be affected? How are kids and, and uh, staff and parents going to be affected? And so that's, that's the part that we need to be thinking about. How are we going to monitor this? When I talk to Leslie on the phone, um, many times when KSB shows up to the board table, it's because they need our help. I would encourage you as a board, not necessarily us, but someone, is that when you think about this monitoring and adjustment, this progress, if you will, you need to be calculated. How often do we want to make sure we revisit this? How often do we want to see progress? You know, what are the plans for rolling out a brand new school year? When we think about the culture, communication input and order, what does that look like? How are we going to make sure people feel 
like they understand the purpose. Maybe that they're even involved with some of that. What a better way than if I'm sitting in a building and I'll ask them, and let's say I'm at an elementary here in Sabetha, hey, what does success look like to you? Has it in reflection of the district mission? Now, they don't deviate. They don't need to make up their own mission because the board's already done that. But what does it look like for me in my building, in my position? What's it look like all the way up to the high school? Those are ways and opportunities for your people to gain input and develop some order where they feel comfortable. But as a board superintendent, how are you going to get those chunks back? I'm sure Todd's got a plan already in his mind and he's already got it laid out. Um, getting a new assistant soup probably wasn't one of them, but um, what does that look like for me to have that conduit with my principals? Probably in this case on a daily, weekly basis, because there's going to be a lot of things going for the board, maybe on a monthly basis for the community, maybe weekly, maybe frequent. And so what is going to be your mechanism? And less this is where you and Todd kind of come in is when you develop these things, what is going to be your mechanism to kind of pull the dipstick out of the pickup and say, hey, where are we? We up on the full, we half empty, are we down at the bottom, we need to refill? And, and it's going to be a constant cyclical cycle. And unfortunately, it's going to take some time to do that. But just having a short conversation all the time versus having one conversation once in a while will serve you well. Does that sound fair? So we're going to spend about the last 15 minutes, if I can have it, and I just want you as a board um, to talk about, let's start thinking about these areas. So we talked about this purpose. Again, this kind of goes back to that relative advantage. What is the purpose? The board has to be crystal clear on that. Pretty clear, pretty straightforward on what it looks like. What is it going to look like? I'm going to go back to that other picture, but we're going to have you then, whether we want to do it today or if we want to just jot down some ideas and revisit that, kind of finish that up because of time, I'll let you guys help me well, decide I, that. We had two that need to leave. We have an executive session and we have two that need to leave earlier than we thought. Yeah. So we might need to, yeah. You want to have a short conversation just to kind of get this started and then maybe revisit this at a later time to finish this up. Does that sound good? Okay. Let's take about five minutes. Let's think through this real quick. And if, if we want to go, can we go three and three? Is that okay? So that way we have less groups to kind of come by. <laughs> But start kind of sketching out a little bit. What would, how would you answer these as a board? And then really Leslie and I and Todd, we could come up with some themes to bring back to you in some sense. So. Where do we go? We have to I think that's something that needs to be dealt with. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 I think that's something we probably could have done better. In this case, it's a better job of yeah. I mean, yeah. But, uh, so, trying to do that instead of I think, yeah. No, how would you say? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. I didn't want to interrupt people's time to talk, but I, I, and I didn't want to share some of the thought processes that I was having. 
to take uh, uh, seniors or something, or what I was thinking about, because I didn't want to. And One topic Like to 
Whatever it is, you get the people that are upset to come, but you don't get the people that are on the outside of the case of this. And let's be um, a community about it instead of, yeah, you know, and that might be say so and so, whoever's you know, the leading business people or whatever, say, I need you to come. I need you to come. Instead of just, Okay. We had a conversation about 
You're right. Yeah. 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 Y